Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. But the name of the name, because the name, the title of my message is Under Pressure. So it's like, it's, it's perfect. My husband has started a new series and it's called uh, Stretch, right? Okay, good. If you were here on um, Sunday, it was a great message. And he said something that really um, gave me just a little bit, a piggyback, almost like a piggyback on what he said. But this is what he said. The value is not in the idea of faith. The value is in the stretch of your faith. You know, the idea of faith is really amazing, right? Because we talk a lot about faith. As a matter of fact, today we sang a song and we say, the promises of God are what? Yes and amen. amen. And I'm going to tell you that our God does not lie. He says that he's not a man that he should lie. So everything that the word of God says is the truth. It's the truth of God. What happens is many times we fall under pressure. And that's what I want to talk to you about. That it's in those moments that we are in great pressure that many times we think that God is unfaithful. So I want to start already and I want you to go to James uh, verse 3 to 8. And tonight I want, you to, I want you to open your heart and I want you to open your ears to hear what God has to say. I want you to open your eyes to see beyond your moment, beyond the pressure that maybe you are going through in life at, in this moment in time. I want you to receive the word for what it is, and I'm believing that we are going to walk out of this room encouraged. Some of us are going to walk out of this room whole and healed, because God can heal as he pleases. He can heal, it, heal you right now. He can deliver you right now. So I am going to talk, and I'm just going to disclaim this to you because I am going to talk about a process. But I want you to know that the process that I'm talking about, it's, I'm not talking, you know, it could be years, it could be months. But I want you to know that the process that I'm going to talk to you, it depends how you are going to agree with his word, how we are going to surrender our will, how we're willing to surrender whatever is taking place in our life, whatever has taken place in our life, and we yield to him. And so we, there is not, um, this is not a message that I don't want you walking out of here and saying, well, pastor talks so much about like pressure and then she talks about like processes and we don't want to, we don't like not all of those peace, right? We like peace, but nobody likes process. We want to be peacekeepers, but God has called us to be peacemakers and peacemakers have to, they have to talk. You know, and I believe one of the things that God told me and I have learned is that, you know, I've been talking last, uh, this past Saturday, I was talking to our brave team and our brave leaders and our brave people that came, all of the brave women that attended. And I, I, one of the things that I have learned, and in, in the Bible talks about courage all the time. Jesus said, be of good courage, right? He says, I have overcome the world. In this life, you're going to have a lot of pressure. But he says, but do not lose heart. And so many times when we hear the word courage, you think it's a, a personality trait. Who thinks that? Only in me. I guess I was the only one. <laughs> Self-deceived all this time. But I don't feel courage. If you're feeling, if you're waiting to feel courageous, if you're feeling to feel your 100%, you are not going to start living and walking in the promises of God. That yes and amen probably take longer. Because we're, we we're waiting to feel great. I'm waiting to feel 100% whole in order to declare that God has healed me. I'm waiting to see, I'm waiting to say that my marriage or my family or my finances are doing well until I have some proof in the bank. Until my spouse changes his attitude. Until my children start behaving, then and only then will I proclaim that God has done something in my life. You see, faith is the opposite. Faith is calling those things that are not, they are not as though they are. 
and I'm not saying just just say it and you you're like you say it you know like thank you father for you know for my family for my finances for whatever you you name it and then let's say you're believing for your finances the father thank you that you're opening the windows of heaven but yet you don't give you don't tithe that's not faith thank you father for my finances but I see you always amazing Oh, many times I, I've been there, like, oh, Father, thank you for my finances. Thank you that you're going to do a miracle. And the miracle that I'm already, I'm already seeing that my miracle is going to be that, that those shoes are going to be on sale. <laughs> thank you, Father, for just your, your, your promises are yes and amen. Those shoes were $200, but guess what? They were $199. <laughs> and you don't tell your spouse because they were on sale. I'm just teasing, but we do things like that. We're asking God, you know, right now we're about to start a Financial Peace University. If you want to get your finances in order, if you believe in for a breakthrough in your finances, take that class. That's faith. Sacrificing every Monday to be in that class. I'm taking that class. I'm like, I cannot be quoting scripture and me not be, being in charge of my finances. That's not faith. And forgive me if I look too intense, right? I just get intense. You know, my life has been intense. I better be intense for God, right? Okay, so we're ready. James, Santiago, I like that name. For you know that, oh my gosh, for you know that, I, I, I wear glasses now, right? <laughs> for you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to what? To endure a few things. Several things. Just things that are good. No, it says to endure all things. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. And if anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he will give it. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. See, we are the ones who overwhelm people when they fail. People, we do that. We're good at that. But Jesus said, no, the word of God says, no, you, you come with your failures, and I'm going to overwhelm you because you're not defined by your failures. All of us fail. If you say, if you're sitting right now and say, you know what, thank God I have never failed, you're deceived. Just like I was deceived that you thought that courage, you know, courage wasn't a personality trait, right? All this time, what? A revelation from heaven. Just make sure that you ask, empowered by the confident faith, without doubting that you will receive. For the ambivalent person believes one minute and doubts the next. Being undecided makes you become like the rough seas driven and tossed by the wind. You're up one minute, you're tossed down the next. When you're half-hearted and wavering, it leaves you what? So God doesn't leave us unstable. It is us when we cannot make up your mind, when we're ambivalent. One moment, yes, God, you're for me, but then, but then there's the crushing, right? Then there's the pressure because that comes with life. And in that moment is when we need to decide, no, you know what? It's under this pressure that I'm being made stronger. When you are half hearted and wavering, it leaves you unstable. Can you really expect to receive anything from the Lord when you're in that condition? So many of us are saying, where is my promise? Well, where did you lose or misplace your faith. You know, God is faithful. I love how the girls were mentioned. God is faithful. We are unfaithful. I am unfaithful. When I doubt God, I am unfaithful. Let's call it what it is. When I don't trust God and I think that my problem is bigger, my sickness is bigger, and some people say, don't call it your sickness. Well, it's not yours. It's mine. Because we're like, oh, no, don't say that it's yours. I'm like, whose headache is it then? 
the headache. We're, we're so, we are so like fixated on, the, don't say that you have a headache, that you have like anxiety. Is it yours? <laughs> is it? I'm not saying own it and like, oh my gosh, this is who I am. I am pain. I am depression. I am anxiety. I am, I am poor. I am broke. I'm not saying that. This is what I'm not saying. What I'm saying is like, hey, if we're going to face it with faith, then be brave. That's why we're not helping anyone because we're always doing great. Nobody can relate to us. We're always like, ah, mountaintop, and you can even breathe in the mountaintop because, you know. <laughs> Praise God, I'm in the mountaintop. Like, are you? We go to the mountaintop for just a few minutes. Do you know people that are living in the mountaintop? Do you know someone who's at the summit, or who's at Mount Everest, and they have a mansion there? They cannot even stay there. For, they already go with, like, oxygen tanks, and, my God, they can only do it. Like, take a picture, and we're down. Because <laughs> you want to stay there, you're going to die. Your body's not going to adjust. We were not made for mountaintops. We are made to get to mountaintops from mountaintops. But we need to come down to reality. We need to come down to the valley. And we need to face that reality with God. I love what the message says, and I'm not going to read it all. And I didn't say that to our media team, but it says, consider it a sheer gift. The same verse that I just read. Friends, are you considering your, your right now, wherever you are, something is crushing you? Because I believe something is, life will always crush us in, in, in different seasons of our lives. But he says, this is what, what James says, consider a sheer gift. How many have a gift tonight? Only a few, huh? I'm going to tell you, I'm unwrapping my gift as I'm speaking. I'm wrapping it. What a sheer gift. But see, if we take it that way, we're like, oh, my God, is this the best that God can give me? We need to start seeing God's best whether you like it or not. And I'm being convicted because I was reminded, you know what, when God called us to come to New Hall, I was mad at God because he gave me a word. It's good when he gives you a promise. And he says, I'm going to give you my best. And then he sent me to New Hall. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not kidding. And almost for about a year and a half, I was like, I will come here and I will be like, wow, your best, huh? <laughs> Is your best? People are yawning on Wednesday night, like the 30 ambivalent people with me, right? Should we be here? Should we not be here? And I was like, should I preach? Should I not preach? <laughs> We're in the same boat. And I was like, this is your best? Like, who do I think I am? I'm a daughter of God, therefore he should give me the best. And then sometimes he gives you his best, but you don't even recognize it. Because you thought his best was going to be in a different package. I thought his best was going to be Stevenson Ranch. <laughs> thought his best was Valencia. Okay, I can see that. <laughs> a new hole. New hole nine years ago. Like, oh my gosh, go look at videos. This doesn't look like the new hole when we came. What a sheer gift, Lord. And I remember crying to God, and, and you know, I, the one thing that I have done always my whole life is that I, I do cry, but I do cry out to God, and you complain. And complain to God. It's okay. He's not bothered with you complaining. He's like, come. Yeah, I already know you're not complaining. Come, daughter. <laughs> and I'm crying, and I'm like, oh, gosh. Send me people that are ready. Send me people that want to serve. Send me people that they're going to pray for me instead of me praying for them. like... <laughs> All this like craziness that you're asking, right? And then the Lord said to me every day, the Lord says, I have given you my best, Virginia. You have to see it through my eyes. And I remember, I never forget it that, that before I, every Wednesday when I would preach, I, and a day before I, I was about to quit because the pressure of life was killing me. And God didn't put pressure on me. It was life in my own opinions and my whatever I was believing. But I remember that, that I was crying and I said, you know, I'm not, I can't do this. I can't do it. I was never called to do this. Besides, I have an accent. <laughs> do you know I have an accent? 
So I was telling them, no, I can't. And I was crying with God, driving home, like, no, how dare you? Why did you choose me? Like, I have an accent, and the people don't even understand. What did you say? I'm not like, <laughs> she said, what? I couldn't. Oh, he, I was like, you're killing me softly. <laughs> you know, because I think of songs whenever, like, that's why I'm like, under pressure. So you want to deal with your pressure so we don't sing another one, like, Mama, I just killed a man, right? <laughs> oh, like, can you tell that I'm a fan of Queen? Do not write me a letter. I do love Queen, so deal with it. So anyways, <laughs> come back Holy Spirit. But anyways, so that following after I did my whole, you know, bit with God and everything, then, then the Lord said, just Virginia, just trust me. I'm like, easy for you to say. All these are my conversations with God. I should write a book like my conversations with God, right? They'll be so funny because he never agrees with you. And so, and so I remember one Wednesday I came and then it was people like, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating, okay? Well, about like, I don't know, maybe, I don't want to exaggerate numbers, you know, because people tend to exaggerate numbers. But it probably was about 35 people on a Wednesday night. We can do better, people. So, but that Wednesday night, the people were still picking their boogers, you know, like, I can see you. We're only a few, like, and this didn't look like that. So the, the stage wasn't like this. So it's like, I can see you. <laughs> Youth were passing papers to each other. And I wanted to, like, choke them at that moment, like, stop it. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I got open my eyes and I said, Father, I just want to love. Like, while I'm preaching, I'm thinking, multitasking. Because I'm thinking, they're not even paying attention. One was asleep, right? I mean, and I'm not, one was asleep, another one, might, I, a lot of them were yawning and everything. So I was like, well, I can think and speak at the same time. So I was like, okay, Lord, help me love your best. And I'm going to tell you that that night, because I was asking God to love his best, that night he opened my eyes. And I fell in love with what he gave me. And I've been in love since then. And it's that love that has kept me through my pressure moments. It's that love that has kept me through my darkest moments when I thought about he gave me his best. What am I saying this? Because it's easy to believe God. Like you're asking for a promise, but then he gives you the promise, right? And they're like, oh, I thought that pressure shouldn't be part of it. No, pressure is part of it. It's part of it. Faith without what? Is what? Then so what makes us think that we're not going to encounter pressure? That we're not going to be crushed? It feels like we're being crushed. I'm going to tell you, believing and standing in faith feels like being crushed. And no one likes that. So it says, you know that under pressure your faith life is forced into the open and it shows its true color so you don't try to get out of anything prematurely let it do its work so you become mature and well developed not deficiency in any way pressure is the process of faith write it down tell my husband he's, since he's not here right tell him pastor virginia gave a point Pressure is the process of faith. He's like, what's your point? I don't have a point. I do have a lot of points. <laughs> you know what I have decided? I've decided to embrace, embrace the crushing. I've decided to embrace the pressure. Because that's a choice. Isaiah 40, 31 says, but those who wait in the Lord, on the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings, like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. And what is it that we feel like we're flopping instead of soaring like eagles? Why is it that we are super exhausted and weary instead of being not weary, right? Walking and not being, and walking what? Walking in faith. It doesn't mean you're going for a walk and I felt great. No, I'm talking about walking in faith, living in faith. 
running the race. The race that you and I have been given. Your race might look different than mine, but we're all running a race. We're all walking in faith. But he says that we are supposed to, we shall mount up like eagles. Okay, but we love to say all those things. I'm going to mount up like eagles, and you like even do this at home, right? Like <laughs> whatever can get you excited. You're like around the house. Like it's like, what are you doing? Like I'm an eagle for Jesus. Like, <laughs> like we do all this craziness. You go for a run, and I'm running my race, right? Like, you're just kidding yourself. <laughs> Going for a walk, a power walk. And I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about, like he says, those who wait on the Lord. That means that those who know that God is going to deliver. He's going to deliver. I'm just going to wait on him. I don't know when he's going to do it, but he's going to deliver. He's going to heal. He's going to restore. He's going to redeem. I don't know, but I'm just going to wait on him. And while waiting, it's not just waiting like, oh, just sit on your blessed assurance. <laughs> no, waiting is doing. Waiting is, is, is doing the, as if he already did it. Yes. You know, I'm living as if. My name is Virginia, as if. <laughs> because that's faith. If I believe it, so be it then. I'm smiling now. <laughs> so if you see me smile and it's kind of weird, like, it's okay, because at least I'm doing it. <laughs> and you know, there's, there's this, uh, I don't know if you know a lot about eagles, right? My God, time is flying when you're having fun. So if you know a lot about eagles, right? And so, you know, like, that soaring doesn't happen. It's not automatically. An eagle, like, an eaglet is not born as a baby chick, right? It's not born already flapping their wings. And no, no, no. Have you ever seen a baby eagle? They look, like, retarded. <laughs> is that a bad word? I don't know. But they look ugly. They look weird. Like, well, is this going to be an eagle? And sometimes that's how we see ourselves. Like, what? Is that, am I? Do I have eagle powers? They're like, that's from Nacho Libre. Okay, so, do, do I have... Do, do I really have potential? Because right now I don't ha even have any feathers. Right now I'm being fed. You know, like when we start as a baby Christians, it's okay to be fed. But if you've been in the church more than three years, you should be feeding yourself. It is what it is. You know how many people leave churches, have left this church just because they're not being fed? How long have you been saved? Oh, praise Jesus, I've been saved for 22 years. Uh, and, but you're not being fed. Being fed means you shoot up the word. At the beginning, yes, you're learning and everything, and God is going to give you, God's going to speak to you in a different way. God's going to feed you in a different way. But as we grow, as we mature, you need to feed on the word of God by yourself. And when you come to a service, it should be just like, that's what God was already talking to me. It should be just like a confirmation. <laughs> we come to do communion, right? It's, this is a communion kind of type of thing. It's, it's a feast that you get to feed on the word that you've been putting inside of you. So anyways, there's a mama. I'm going to go fast. There's a mama. Maybe I'm going to go five minutes extra, yeah? Do you guys give me permission? We're still good. It's summer, right? So, um, so the mama, the mama, the mama uh, eagle, you know, and dad, they talk about because uh, eagles made for life, right? So they're talking about their eaglet, and they say, you know what? It's time. This dude looks just like us now. By then, when when the when the eaglet is, it has, it's really time for him to soar and be flying. You should see. You should go on on YouTube and find them, right? Because there's a video of them. You don't even know who's the mom, who's the dad, and who's the baby. Because the eaglet doesn't know that he's already mature, that he's already, he's ready to soar. He's ready to fly. And so they decide, I saw them talking, no, they don't talk, but it's already in there. So the mom starts pulling everything out of the nest because he needs to make him uncomfortable. Because this baby is not going to get out of this nest. And many times we live in that, in that familiar, we, we like it already, everybody's feeding me, everybody's here. No, it's like, okay, God says, okay, uh, you've been walking along with me, you're learning, so I'm going to start pulling everything that's off so it gets uncomfortable, so you're ready to launch. I'm ready to propel you. And, so they, and then I'm going to tell you that even then, God, God's amazing how he puts, like, they all know when, so they, they pull everything. And then fast forward, the, the eaglet is not doing anything because he is 
petrified. He doesn't know that he can use his wings. And so at some point, you see the mama and then dad, dad ego goes all the way at the bottom. And then what, what, what does the mom do? She pushes the eaglet out. <laughs> like, puck. And the poor thing goes like flapping. He doesn't know that he can soar. So he's flapping, free falling. And like, and then if he doesn't, if he doesn't mount soaring, the dad is ready to rescue him. And they put him back again and they do it until he gets it. And that's what dad, our dad, our heavenly father wants to do with us. Like, okay, son, daughter, I'm going to push you out. Like, there, there's going to be things. There's going to be things that are going to be allowed in your life. The enemy wanted to destroy you. But I'm going to use it. I'm going to allow them because it's life. And in this life, I already told you, you're going to be with a lot of pressure, with a lot of turmoil, with a lot of whatever you call it, pain. But I'm going to allow it. But I'm going to tell you that it's going to come a point that I want you to soar. And when I saw I want you to know that you need to wait on me because you might feel like you're free falling and we're flapping and we don't even know what to do and we're like crazy, but I want you to know that I'm there to catch you. And many times that free falling doesn't have to be over and over until some of the eaglets, they get it on the first time, like, well, like what, what, what is this? Like, ooh, I can soar, right? And even then, dad goes behind him or her, whatever, I don't know behind it right and like okay he's doing good and then all of a sudden he loses he's like okay you're doing good but he, the dad is always always there ready to catch him I mean if the, he designed this bird like that can you imagine do you think God is gonna let us fall free fall and we just crash no but many times I have felt like hey I already crashed and you're, you know we're telling God everything that he hasn't done he's like no 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 I will never let you free fall I will never let you become just powder. And even if we crash, I'm going to tell you, even if we do by choice, I'm going to tell you because there have been times that I told God, you know what, I'm not even broken. I'm just dust. Because we like to be like that, right? We like to talk, you know, we have to tell God like how awful he wasn't there for you. I'm not broken. I, I am just, I'm dust. Oh, perfect. He said, you know what, let me just pour my water. And let me reshape you again. With God, there's nothing. There's no excuses. With God, we always win. We always win. Okay, let me give you another scripture. Can you put my other scripture? You know, I believe that we're living in times when we preach a lot about the promise. Right? We love to preach about the promises, about, oh, the promises of God. I am the redeemer of the Lord. Which is good. We are to preach about the promise, but we are preaching less about the process. So people are like, what, what, what happened? Like, he gave me all these promises. Like, all of this is mine, and yet I haven't seen it. Because you know what? We don't like to preach about the process because it's not very popular. People are not going to like it. What? Do you mean I have to work? Do you, need to, do you mean I have to address my behavior? My spouse does it, but I've been praying and fasting for him. <laughs> Why are you not doing the work, Lord? I've been praying and fasting for my children. That's what's happening. I, I've been praying and fasting for my finances, for my career, for whatever. And what, what, where are you? No, because we're putting it on them. We're not putting it on us. And believe me, I'm preaching to myself. I'd be like, oh, my God, well, that's you. No, no, no. You have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. No, we are going home and telling, you know, we come home, we receive a word, and we're like, we're excited about the promises of God. I, you see, I don't know how to sing. <laughs> All the promises. Ah, yes, and amen. And you get in your car like, faithful you are, faithful forever, praise Jesus. And then you get in your house and like, <laughs> and then you find your spouse there like ah. and then you go home and then you find your kids and they're the video games and they, they see you you're like okay I'm going to try faithful and then they slam the door because they don't want to even see you but we're not addressing that okay Lord you're going to do it thank you Jesus 
You're going to speak to my children. You're going to speak to my spouse. Yeah, amen. No, you have a chatterbox. We have a tongue. We have a mouth. But nobody, no, I don't want to, no, forgive me. There's few people that are willing to address those things in their own families, in their business, in whatever it is. We are, we are going home where families are hurting because we refuse to go through the process of the crushing. Because if it's Godish, we shouldn't have pressure. You know, pressure is very uncomfortable. You know this? I, I got this. Did you get your rubber band on Sunday? Boy, it didn't go with my clothes, so I decided to get my own scrunchie. <laughs> It didn't fly, you know, with the outfit. I might be colorblind, but I know this is the same color of my shoes. <laughs> but I did it with a purpose. You know what? Because I said, you know, Virginia, faith is for now. Faith is for being, we need to be present. We're not even present. Because we are so fixated and we're so, with everything that's happening. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. You know, we were like, what's going on with me? I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm flopping. I feel like God has left me. And I'm going to tell you something because God has created us so beautiful. He designed us so beautiful. Our mind, do you know that our brain does, and there is a part of your brain, this part of your brain here in the front is called cerebral cortex. And you know that this part is what processes pain, physical pain. It processes physical pain, but the brain doesn't understand. So when we're in pain, like this, someone stabbed me in the arm, and like there is a message. That, like, there's so many words that I don't even know, like the limbic, whatever. So it comes through my spine, and it, it goes here. So it's already our, our brain is always working, our mind is always working. So it goes here, it sends a message, like okay, she just got stabbed. There's pain going. Blah, blah, blah. There's like an alarm system, and it goes here, and it goes. And then I recognize that I'm in pain, and it hurts me. And then someone is, is ready to help you. If you're bleeding, someone's going to help you. If, you. if you're sick and someone can see it, like, oh, we need to help this, these people. We need to help them. But I'm going to tell you that the same, the same pain when you're heartbroken, do you know that it's the same pain that processes is this, is this part? And the brain doesn't recognize, is this, is this a soul issue? Is this a heart issue? No, the brain says, oh, there is pain here. There's pain here. I'm going to tell you, like, that's what a lot, of, a lot of people in the world, they're dying. They're not coming to transformation to Jesus because we only share the things that are seen. We don't share if we're being like, oh, my gosh, like, you're heartbroken. We don't share when we, are, when we feel depressed, when we feel like, oh, my God, I can't do it anymore because no one knows those, that kind of pressure. No one needs to know that. An ambulance is not going to come and try to, like, help you. No one knows when you're bleeding in your heart. No one knows when you have trauma in your soul. No one knows. But I tell you, who knows? Jesus knows. And what, why am I sharing all this? Like, Pastor, why are you talking about this? Because I'm going to tell you that God doesn't, everything that God has in Ecclesiastes, put my, my picture, my, not my picture, but my scripture, Ecclesiastes, let go fast, three one says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. And you can read the, the entire uh, chapter, it says there's a time to kill. There's, okay, you see, I started with that one. No, it's just a time to live, a time for everything. There's a time for everything. But if you read it all, it never says there's a time to quit. There's not a time to quit because life and time moves forward. It doesn't move backwards. And I think we have to come to a, 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 a we have to like come to like really evaluate ourselves and, and we need to say like, how am I living life? Am, am I allowing the pressure? Am I saying stay in pain? I'm not saying to reside in pain. You know what? We are so afraid that we, we are not getting healed because we're not addressing anything. We're thinking we're living in faith, but we're not living in faith. We're living a life that is not even touching all of those. All of those things have come to pressure you. We, we, our kids, some of us, our kids don't even know our past. Like, I have talked to people who said, I know those, uh, you know, I used to be very wild when I was like younger, but my kids don't know that because I don't want them to know that. Why not? Maybe they will relate to you. You're not the same person anyways. Hopefully, right? If you are, then don't share it, but because then that's not a testimony, you know? 
what am I saying? That we're so afraid. Like, oh my gosh. No, God says there is a season for everything. There's going to be a season of pressure, a season of crushing, but we're not to make our dwelling place there. God didn't call me. It, it, we're supposed to fill it, embrace it. Yeah, embrace it. This is my season. You know what? This is my season where I'm getting my wholeness. This is my season when my endurance is growing. This is my season where I'm stretching my faith. This is my season where I believe in God. And hey, it's painful. And I need to embrace the pain that comes with it, but God hasn't called me to live there. It shouldn't be my permanent address. It should not. But many of us get stuck in there. Hey, I've been stuck there. I've been stuck and I wanted to move. I've been stuck and just like, oh my God. No, God is just saying, you know what? Embrace it and then move forward. We're not supposed to live in winter forever. We're, you're not in Narnia. You're not in Narnia. We're not in Narnia. No, there are seasons in life. And there's times. And the timing of God is perfect. And we question his timing. We prematurely abandon many times. You know, the thing, God's about to break through. But we're like, oh, this is too painful. This is too much. What? I need to face my own issues. No, I need to face how I spend money. I need to face how I feel about people. I need to face how I, I don't forgive. I need to face how I do this. I, oh, no, no, no. Too much. And prematurely, we abort what God has called us to do. Prematurely. You know, we all love praise and worship, right? Don't you love praise and worship? I love praise and worship. Love it. But I'm going to tell you that what you see now is not what we have nine years ago. But sometimes we see like this is the mountaintop, right? Tonight, worship was awesome. But I remember when I worship, I mean... It wasn't glorious. It was painful. It was painful. And I'm going to tell you that they had, all of them had a choice. And it's the same people. We still have Alexis, Sarah, uh, Jasmine, and Pastor Feldy came right after. But uh, when the girls started, them three, I mean, they were so afraid. They were so afraid. They didn't know that they can soar. They were free falling. Free falling, but they had a choice. They had to make a choice and believe that whatever God wouldn't ask you to soar, God wouldn't ask you to worship because you're being called to worship, you've been called to praise, then God wouldn't ask you to do that just to flop and let you fall. If this wall can speak, they can tell you how overwhelmed they were, how worried they were every Sunday, every Wednesday that they need to do worship, then they, and they didn't know what to do, and they were only young kids. They were like between 16 and up to like, I don't know, 17 years old when we started. And they couldn't even open their eyes. And some of them ran from the stage on a Sunday, Alexis. <laughs> And some of us ran from preaching for a while, Virginia. But you know that God, he says, you know, like what I read, I said, he says, when you have an opportunity, God wants you to come back in your failure. He says, come back to me because I'm going to overwhelm you with your grace. God will never shame you and tell you like, oh, you run off the stage. You were crying. You were in that room. If that room can speak, they were all crying there. But you know what? They, at the end, they just like wipe out their tears and they will come and they will come. And there was a day like their endurance was getting, getting stronger. They were getting stronger in Jesus. And one day it was like, it was like a suddenly, but you know, I don't believe that there's suddenly of God. No, you were in your process. It just happened. One day you just got stronger. But to the people, to the outsiders, for you from sitting there from afar, you're like, oh, that was a suddenly of God. And we pray for suddenly of God. Well, my friend, suddenlies are in a process. And one day, worship was like, angels had come. And the three of them were like, you know. And then they went to college, and they learned all these things, and they equipped themselves, and they stirred themselves up. And, and then as we were faithful, and they were faithful, they got added more people to this amazing worship team. And that musician, most of the musicians have been with us since day one. 
Pastor Edgar has been like he was, somebody pushed him. He was an eaglet and God said, oh no, you're going, you're leading. So what am I saying to you tonight? And I'm closing with this. I'm gonna tell you that the worst moments of your lives can become turning points of great victories for God. And I can honestly tell you that. My worst moment in my life has become my greatest victory. Why do you, because you feel so awesome that you're so qualified? No. It's because I have chosen to embrace the process with Jesus. I have chosen to embrace whatever comes my way. Yeah, there are days that I don't do too well. There are days that I do good and there are days that are okay and I'm believing for greater days. So I don't know where you are in life, but I'm going to tell you that God is not done with you. And God wants your faithfulness. It's, it's not a commitment. Sometimes we start strong and then we give up on God when it gets, when it gets, when it gets ugly, when it gets, it gets, conf, it's such a confusion when we're in that, when, when we're in that process. I'm going to tell you that life has crushing blows. It comes with it. And I'm going to tell you that if you're going to live for God, you're going, going to get hurt. You're going to have disappointments. You're going to fail. You name it. But that doesn't define us if we don't allow it. Because we can allow it. So it's time to make a choice and to say, you know what? I Come on. And I'm not saying, come on, you know, have you heard people like, come on, devil. No, wait, wait, no, why? Why are you inviting the devil to come? Come on, devil. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, okay, life, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to overcome. I'm ready to overtake this thing that has been a mountain. I'm ready for it. And please, whatever you do, you need to break out today. I, I need you to break your relationship with, with you know who. You're like, no who? I don't know. It's up to you. You need to break out relationship with doubt. And, and it's a daily walk, right? Faith is daily. So you're like, well, I, I, I broke with depression last year, but now I'm back with it. But break it again. You know that every day, yeah, I have said, you know what? I have been dealing with depression and anxiety. But you know, every day I say, you know, I break depression from my life. And I believe there's going to be one moment there's going to be like, oh my gosh, I feel so awesome. But I have already, like, I am walking and I'm living my life as if it's already done. And I want to tell you that take, that takes guts for me to say, oh no, my God is more present with me than, than ever. Do you know that I wouldn't return three years back? If God would say, okay, Virginia, choose. Do you wanna go back three years, reset, and go back to your life three years ago? And I honestly, when I was doing worship, I said, I will not. Because he is more real than ever in my life. He is more present than ever in my life. I have fallen in love even more with Jesus in my worst moments. And if you allow him, he is going to swoop you up, like grab you. If you feel like you're free falling, just do it. Let him catch you. Stop struggling. There's so many of you that he wants to wrap you. Not, uh, Psalms 91 one says, he who dwells in the secret place of the, of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. You know, he wants to wrap you. But you're like, no, 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 because you, no, no, I don't want to be hugged. I don't want to be, I don't want, I don't want your best, God. I don't want it. I don't want it. And God says, just stop wrestling with me and allow me to do what you need to do and address what you need to address under the shadow of his wings. No, under the shadow of the enemy, no, under the shadow of your past, but under the shadow of his wings. 
Go home. Address your family. Address those issues that you're avoiding. Address them. It's nasty, but address them. Because you believe, because I know that if I wait on the Lord, I'm going to soar. Because if I do that, then I am going to run without getting weary. I am going to walk without fainting. Because I'm not going to be ambivalent. So I want to pray for you. Close your eyes. Well, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this night. And I thank you that for your word that is alive and well. And I thank you that you have sent your word to deliver us. You said that you sent your word to deliver us from any destruction, to heal us from any disease. So, Father, I pray for deliverance tonight. I pray for healing tonight. I pray for, I know that there is people here in such a need. I know there is people right here that feel hopeless. They feel like they're free falling. They feel like they're flopping in their lives. But I'm here to tell you that God says, no, I have you. I got you. You just have to wait on me. You just have to trust me. Trust me that I am who I am, and I am powerful, and I am mighty, and I am bigger than your issues. I am bigger than your problems. I am bigger than your trauma. I am bigger than your financial troubles. I am bigger than that, and all you need to ask is ask for wisdom, and he'll give it to you. He's not going to scold you. He's not going to shame you. He's going to embrace you with his overwhelming grace. So that's you. I'm just going to say a, a really quick prayer. Everybody just just bow your head and close your eyes so no one feels like, oh, my God, people are going to know. If that's you and you say, you know what, I need, to, I need to give some issues I've been avoiding. I've been avoiding because the pressure is too much. I busy myself with other things because it's better to busy myself than to address me. So if that's you, I just want you to raise your hand really quickly. Really quickly, you can put it down. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for every hand that went up. And I thank you that there is no shame in you. That we can be shameless in your presence. And that it's in your presence that there is fullness of joy. And I thank you, Father God. I thank you for every person that raised their hand. And I thank you that tonight that they will know that they're able to address and face anything that has come their way. Anything that will come into their future. Because they already have what it takes to be able to overcome. And that is your Holy Spirit that dwells inside of them. That same Spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead. Dwells inside of them. And is bringing wholeness, redemption, and healing to their lives, into their families, into their bodies. So I thank you for that, Father. We say it is done. We receive it by faith in Jesus' name. With the same attitude. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.